still watching Prime Morning and you know every Wednesday we come your way with a big interview. My guest for today actually is making some strides and I, I was like, oh my goodness, uh, how I wish I was that young and uh, would have completed school at that age. But some of us had to complete uh, in our... I'm still 25 years though, so I'll stick with that. <laughs> My guest for today is Princess Coco Boati. You know, Princess Coco Boati is only 18 years and she is actually the youngest chartered accountant. Hello, darling. Hi. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. <laughs> you know, I was asking you, are you still 18? I am. You're I'm still 18. 18 yeah. All right. Let's take a look at this profile video and then we get talking to her. Princess Coco Boatin is a Ghanaian young lady prodigy born on 29th December 2004 and hails from Nsawam in the eastern region of Ghana. She was admitted into a Kosombo International School for her senior secondary school education after passing her common entrance examination at the age of 11. After successfully excelling in the West African Secondary School Certificate Examination, she subsequently gained admission to the University of Ghana to study Bachelor of Business Administration at the age of 14. While at the University of Ghana, she started her professional career with the Institute of Chartered Accountants Ghana to concurrently undertake the professional examinations along with her university program. At the age of 18 and in her last semester to graduate from the University of Ghana Business School, she has successfully qualified as a chartered accountant. Princess effectively combines academic and professional works with other social activities. She was appointed as a deputy head of the finance committee of Elizabeth Francis C. Hall in 2021. She partners with the Voice of God International and the youth wing of Assemblies of God Community Praise Chapel to reach out to the youth. Princess loves to watch basketball with her favorite player being Giannis Antetokounmpo. She loves to watch movies as well as occasionally with a good fiction book. Princess Coco Boatin is our guest for the big interview today right here on Prime Morning. Stay tuned. That's Princess Coco Boatin's story. Now, she went to uh, secondary school at the age of 11, university at the age of 14. My goodness. <laughs> She has to definitely tell us how it all happened. I mean, 11 years. 11 years, it should be what? In class what? I, I class, have no idea. class six? Class, class six. six yes, yeah. class That's six. That's class six. So how did you get into <laughs> secondary school at the age of 11? How okay. did it all happen? So I went to Akosomo International mm -hmm. School. And to get into Akosomo International School, you need to pass their common entrance exams. So I took their common entrance exams in primary six. And then I passed it, so I got admitted there <laughs> at age 11. All right, let's talk about how mommy and daddy decided to let you go to secondary school at a young age. Um, I think they saw that I was smart, mm -hmm. um, especially my mom. She saw that I liked reading a lot, and I participated in a lot of quizzes in primary. So she said, oh, I mean, I can just take the exams just try out it wasn't um it wasn't something that was definite <clears throat> so i took the exams and i mean by god's grace i passed it wasn't something planned it wasn't something definite yeah oh yeah. so when you passed so the plan was not for you to go to secondary school no it was for you to just try just to try out so why exams. did they decide to allow you to go to secondary school then I mean, I passed <laughs> the exams so they were no i mean it's it's an opportunity so uh, we just tried it out. And, Were you nervous yeah. to go to secondary school? Um, I was I was excited because I wanted to know how it felt like. Um, yes, I was a bit nervous because I'm going to be meeting people four years older than me. But I mean, it, it turned out good. I was excited to try it. So, yeah. Now, being the youngest uh, in secondary school at that time, share your experience with us. Um, it was it was Ricky Rocky. 
Um, I mean, initially, it was hard to adjust because, I mean, at home, I wake up whenever I want, except I'm going to school, and I eat whenever I want. But then in SHS, there's this strict lifestyle, and I'm 11. So obviously, it was, it was very, um, very disciplined. But then I adjusted as time went on, and I think I made friends who, you know, guided me, who supported me, do this, do this, this is how you do this, this is how you do this. And I eventually, I got used to it. Did you go I, through a bit of bullying? No, I, I don't think so. I didn't. I didn't, no. Let me ask you uh, a little bit about family life. Okay. Uh, mommy, daddy, uh, siblings. How okay. many siblings you have? I have two younger siblings. So you're the first? Yeah, I'm the first. Are you the trial one? Are they making, you know, um, chicken? I, I think everyone has their own um, parts, so... My parents are still, you know, training my siblings. Not necessarily take the path that I've taken, but yeah, I mean, they are learning from me. I think I serve as a role model to my siblings and to a lot of other people. What does mommy and daddy do for a living? Um, my dad is a reverend minister okay. in the Assemblies of God, and he's also the senior house master of the Seclibon. Mm -hmm. And my mom is um, an accountant in Star Ghana Foundation. Okay. All right, it makes a lot of sense. <laughs> but are these tricks on you with studies? No, they aren't. I think they are very supportive instead. And they, I mean, they chip in advice and guidance whenever I need it. But not necessarily, you know, do this, learn this at this time. I think they give me um, a very serene environment to learn in. Mm. Obviously, somebody will ask how you became the youngest chartered accountant. Mm. You are yet to graduate, but you are done with the exams, like you said yeah, earlier. Yeah. So exams is done, you've passed. Come yeah. what may you graduate, uh, by God's grace, right? Now, how did you become the youngest? Um, how did it all happen? Okay, so I started the professional program in when I was admitted into the University of Ghana. So I was 14 at that time. And so I learned the academic um, curriculum and then the professional curriculum at the same time. And by God's grace, I just finished my last set of papers for the professional curriculum. So that's how come I'm 18. I started at 14 and I used four years, three and a half years, and I'm done. And you combined that with the university? Yeah, I did. What are you studying in the university? Um, business administration. Do you have any other life apart from studying? Um, I do. I think I do. Because I'm just wondering how you can have business administration yeah. going on, which is one of the most difficult courses in the University of Ghana, yeah. and be chattering at the same time. Yeah. But it, it, did, it takes a lot of discipline and sacrifice. I mean, I, don't have, I didn't have a, a, a balanced social life as maybe a normal university graduate because I, I had to sacrifice a lot of my time. The time I would have slipped the time I would have gone out. I mean, not that I don't have a social life, but I did have to discipline myself and cut off a lot of things to, you know, reap the benefits of what I'm, I'm doing. What are the things you cut off? Cut off friends? Partying? No, um, yeah, partying is part. But then one thing that I did feel was my sleep because <laughs> I like sleeping and I had to cut off part of my night time to study. I had to cut off part of my day time to study. So, there was um, a lot of sacrifice with the academic schedule too because combining um, the professional course and the academic course is not easy. Mm. There were times where I had um, professional exams and then IEs within the same period. So I would write um, professional exams today and then I would have an IE the next morning. So those were the few sacrifices that I had to make um, to be where I am. Mm. What are your dreams and aspirations? Um, well, career-wise. Career-wise, honey. I want to be a, an accountant and to, you know. You want to follow mommy's full step? Yeah, I want to. <laughs> so um, to the part of being a professional accountant, I would have to be recognized by ICAG. And that's why I had to go through the process of writing their exams to be qualified to be a chartered accountant. Let's talk a little bit about your colleagues. You know, most of your colleagues are big on <laughs> social media. Talking about you, yeah. do you really use social media often? I, I do. Yeah, I do. Really? Yeah. 
But social media is time consuming, isn't it? It is, it is. Um, combining it with my studies, I think it did take a lot of discipline. But then one thing that it taught me was my time management. Because I like social media. I like consuming content. So I did schedule time. OK, I'm going to dedicate an hour of my day to my phone. But then after that, I have to learn this. Or if I'm able to cover this area, then I can use my phone afterwards. So that's how come I was able to. So if you say you like content, what kind of content are you talking about? I like um, self-development content. I like people um, who have come far. I mean, it gives me motivation that I'm able to achieve what I want to so achieve. So you don't go looking out for fashion? Um, no, no shoes? No. I, I, I like, I love fashion, but then that's not my main feed on social media. Mm. Yeah. Do you have any um, musician that you love so much? Um, not, not currently. Not currently? Not currently. I listen to rap, um, but then I, I love Lecrae. He's a Christian rapper. Um, yeah, so I think that's something. So do you rap? Um, yes. Um, I'm not a good rapper. But you do rap, right? I try. Because you, you, you listen to rap. I listen. Give me a line or two. Um, yes. <laughs> Come on. Let's do it. I'm not. Let's do, just a line or two. Just a, it, it can be, you know, a Christian rap. It doesn't have to be yeah. a secular one. I Let's go. I have to just listen first because... But you definitely remember some of his songs. He's your favorite. Um, so just give a line or two. You don't have to sing everything. Just a line or two. Um, yes. Let's go. <laughs> you can do it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I think... Oh, I really don't remember a line. I would have to, I have to read it. I always read the lyrics and sing along. Do you read all the time? Reading? Yeah, reading. Do you love to read? Um, I love to read, but it's not something I do all the time. Yeah. How many books have you read so far? I don't, I, I don't think I can count. I don't think so. I, I don't think I can count the number of books I've read so far. But I do read. Yeah. Mm. So let's talk about... You being 18, mm -hmm. obviously this is supposed to be the age that you're supposed to have fun. Yeah. What do you do? As fun. As fun, honey. I, I watch movies. I think watching movies gives me a lot of comfort. I prefer that to going What type out. of movies? I love thriller. Thriller movies. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. And scary movies as well? Um, no, not, not necessarily. But then I do love a good plot twist. Okay, yeah. right. Now you don't come off like somebody like that. We, when really? we see you, we, especially with you chattering at the age of 18, yeah. uh, somebody will think that maybe you watch, you know, just some drama and uh, when we talk about music, you say, oh, I love to listen to jazz. But you say rap. Yeah. But do you listen to secular music at all? Um, sometimes, but then not, not constantly. Mm. Yeah. Do you think anybody else can beat your record? I think so. Though it will be very difficult, I would have to admit that, but I think so. I think someone can definitely. Mm. They say them. as a woman, there are a lot of obstacles uh, to be able to achieve what you have to achieve. Did mm. you face any obstacles as a woman? Um, I, as a woman, I did face obstacles because um, I think combining especially the professional course and then the academic course is mentally draining. You know, having to combine that and then some helping around the household, it's, it's difficult. But then I think it helps you come out stronger. It helps you come out stronger than, than you were before. So I think it's, it's a good thing. Do you have home teachers? Home teachers? Yes. Um, no. I, I don't. You've never experienced home teachers before? I did, probably in primary. Yes, but yes. after that, no home teachers? No. You study on your own? Yeah, I, I have help because I have older friends who have gone through the system. So whenever I need assistance, they are always there to help me. But then, no, not, not necessarily. Let's talk about who inspires you. Who do you look up to, your role models? Um, my mom. My mom is also a chartered accountant. So... And she's a woman. She does, I mean, I love everything that she does. I love everything about her. So she's, she's definitely my role model. Every young girl says my mom until they marry. 
<laughs> no, I'm not married, so yeah. So when we, we get there, there yeah. when we get there, we'll no, see. but are you, are you, do you have you know any plans to you know because you're young, yeah. you went to secondary school at the age of eleven. Somebody will say, okay, you have your life figured out. What you want in the next five years and the next ten years? Yeah. Let me ask you this: Are you looking at getting married soon? Um, I have no idea. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. But I don't have a plan. I don't have a set plan to get married mm -hmm. at this age and have kids at this age. But mm -hmm. I mean, who knows? Mm -hmm. I don't know when I'm going to get married. But if the man should come in, um, I, I well, then we get married if he's eligible. Mm. But for now, no, there's no set plan. Let's talk about where you see yourself in the next five years aside marriage. Forget okay. about marriage. You're still young. Um. So. In the next few years, it's going to be career oriented because, I mean, I want to set my foot down. So hopefully, I get to work with a global firm, especially an audit firm, or and you know pursue other academic mm -hmm. pursuits mm -hmm. to enrich my skills. Yeah. Wow. So auditing—that's where you hope for. Any any particular audit firm that you wish to work with? Um, no, no, no particular audit firm. But then, I mean, I would love to work with one of the big four. Mm -hmm. Like Deloitte? Any, any, any is good with me. You don't want to narrow it down. So if, no, you know. I'm, I'm, I want to expand my horizons. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. I like that. Yeah. Now, you have a lot of, you know, young friends out there as well. Now, your, 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 your classmates are in what class now? I think level 100. And you are in level 400. Yes. yes. How does it feel when you see them? Um... I don't have a set feeling. I mean, I'm excited because I know some of them. And I'm like, oh, hi, it's, it's nice to see you again. Mm -hmm. But then um, one thing that I do notice is that they learn a lot from me. Mm -hmm. And being able to, as their mate, being able to provide them with advice, especially relating to what they are going through, I think it's very, it's very good. It feels very good to do that. You know, there's actually a high rate of unemployment in Ghana yeah, currently. Yeah. You know about it. Obviously, if you read wide and you've chatted, you <laughs> yeah. definitely know more than probably some of us do. Now, um, how do you think as, you know, a young person, if you come out of school and there's unemployment, what are you supposed to do to help yourself? Um, well, so while in school, especially for someone who is not engaged in other activities, I think you have a lot of free time on your hands. So apart from the academic courses that you are going to be taking, mm -hmm. you can enrich yourself with other skills, other vocational skills, other courses, other free courses online that you know, sort of relate to your work environment. So I think um, just broadening your skills. Because every year, a lot of people graduate from the university, a, a lot. And comparing that to the number of jobs available is, is very vast. Mm. So being different is very important. And being different means that enriching yourself with other skills that other students might not necessarily have. But let's look at you. You are talking about look at other fields. Now, again, as you want to get into an audit firm. And we are yeah. looking at four big audit firms in Ghana. Yeah. And it means that it's not going to be easy to get in there. No, so not. what if which it shouldn't be. You come out and it, it will take a while before you get in there. What plans have you put in place uh, as you wait to get into either of the big firms? Well, I would want to enrich my skills because so far it's academic. So I would probably take, um, learn how to use other software, mm. especially accounting software. Okay. Yeah. And I would like to experience internships. I think even if you don't get um, a a stable paying job now. There are internship opportunities mm -hmm. available for almost everyone. So I think that would, that would probably the, be the backup plan. For to me. do internships. Yeah. But do you think students, the kind of courses that they study have contributed to unemployment rates in Ghana? Um, not, not necessarily. The type of courses, mm. well, as I know for the business course, and I know the business course is a very important mm -hmm. course in every industry, in every company. You need, you need a business person in there. You need someone in accounting. So I don't think, especially for business, there's, um, the, the course you learn necessarily contributes to the unemployment. But then the, the key thing here is to be different from your colleagues. What makes different, apart from the degree that you have, 
from your colleagues. You need other skills. You need, you know, other abilities that set you apart. Yeah. What do you think about our curriculum? We've had a lot of complaints. Almost yeah. all the time it's being changed. Yeah, well, I mean, people have been through our curriculum and they are contributing in worldwide organizations. So I don't think there's something bad about but it But you know right our now. curriculum, yeah. when you go to certain countries, you have to rewrite exams. Yeah. You can just go in there and have, you know, continue with the education, meaning mm. that some countries don't see our curriculum as strong and powerful yeah. as theirs. What I do think that we could amend a bit is the practicality of what we learn, because our curriculum is theory-based most of the time. So we could, we could organize courses, especially in tertiary institutions, to you know, give students the feel of the practicality of the courses. It will help them appreciate it better, honestly. And I think for business school, business school is taking steps. Occasionally, they organize software training programs for students, and it's free. So I think that's one step that um, University of Ghana Business School is taking to help its students. So, I mean, other departments, other schools can take up that, that role. Yeah. What makes you love math? Mathematics. Math. Because, I mean, all you're doing is more, for, like, what, 80% mathematics? Yeah. 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 I, think, I mean, I think math is it's straightforward for math. I mean, apart from elective math that mm -hmm. I, I don't know, that it's, it's some way. But then I think math is straightforward. They add one, add one, and get two. But for other courses, you would have to, you know, think a little bit outside the box. Mm. So that's one thing I like <laughs> about math. <laughs> so that's it. What about X and Y? You don't have a problem with finding X? Um, well, no have you me. found X yet? Um, <laughs> no, <laughs> we haven't. Because X has a lot of values. We don't know which one they want us to find. If ever we'll find X. Or why? Or why? Know. We don't know. We don't know who X is and who <laughs> yeah. Y is, but we are still looking for X <laughs> and Y. I, I like that. So let's also talk about, you know, you being a young person, mommy, daddy coming in here. Your childhood, somebody watching will say, this young lady hasn't had a childhood. She's yeah. been forced to study, study, study and graduate. Let children go through the normal childhood stages. Yeah. How was your childhood? I mean, I respect the normal, going through the normal childhood stages. But I think my childhood was fine. I enjoyed my childhood. I mean, how many years can I spend in my childhood? And my parents, you know, made sure that I had a very convenient environment to develop. I wasn't forced to write any exam. I wasn't forced to study anything. They looked at my pace, my learning pace, and said, oh, this, this would be very good for her, right? So um, I think... I was not forced to anything. Mm. They trained me. I mean, they instilled discipline in me. And I think that's, that's fine. That's a lot of discipline? Um, just, just enough. Because everyone is disciplined, right? Mm. Yeah. But any beatings? No. No, not at all. No, no. What about TV time? I had TV time. I mean, I love movies. So obviously, I think that's why I probably got it from, from watching TV time. Mm. What about phone time? Were you allowed to use mobile phone? Yes, I was. I was. Did they regulate the timing for you? Um, at the initial stages, yes. At what age? I think when I, when I entered SHS, I needed a phone. Mm -hmm. I mean, initially, I was regulated because you need to monitor what your child is doing online, at least to be on the safer side. But then eventually, I was, I was made to be, I was left independent. Even though on a few, you know, one or two times, hey, what are you doing on your phone? But then apart from that, I had a phone, yeah. Mm. Your siblings, uh, you said they are going through the regular yeah. process. Yeah. How old are they? Um, I have a sister, the younger sister. She's 13. Okay. And my brother is 15, yeah. Do they feel the pressure of your success? I think so, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> I mean, if I were them, I would probably feel the same um, pressure, but then... They are constantly reassured that, hey, this is your own path. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, do, do whatever makes you feel comfortable. No pressure. But, I mean, there are still a few things that they could pick. There are still a few things that they could learn from mm. you. Your peers out there, what do you think they can do to maximize the opportunity as well? Yeah, so like I said, be different. Be very different. I think uh, apart from your normal um, school activity, 
you can learn other things. Not necessarily academic. It could be vocational. Mm. You could learn how to sew. It, I mean, these things come in very handy in, in emergency times. So I think being different is, is very, very important. Which part of Ghana do you come from? Um, okay. So my dad comes from in Sao mm. And my mom comes from Boku in okay. the Upper East. And it's so I'm mixed. Mm. I'm, I'm a mixed breed. <laughs> I like that. So you say what? 50 50? Yeah, 50 50. That's what lately it is because we mm. hardly have, you know, people say, oh, I'm only from this side. You yeah. we have more 50 50 yeah. than normal. Yeah. Now, I, I'm surprised that in a, a social media era mm. like this, you are able to thrive and get to the feet that you've gotten to. Because a lot of young people struggle with this, especially the usage of mobile phones, how to control themselves watching TV. And one thing that has surprised me the most is the fact that well, even without home teacher, you study on your own. I'm wondering, is it an inborn thing? Um, well, I go to school. So I think that's the main part of it. I go to school. So studying on my own mainly comprises of revising what I've been taught in school. Mm. And if there's any case where I don't understand anything, there's always someone to elaborate further for me. Yeah. But in the case of social media, I think the main thing that we need is discipline. Because social media is not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. It's a all. discipline. I, you need discipline to do that. And I think um, it could serve as a distraction because, I mean, watching one video could turn into watching 50 other videos. <laughs> so I think. I mean, you have to put in practical steps to monitor yourself because it's, it's inevitable, mm. right? So this pain is needed. But then the content you consume on social media as well is very, very important. For me, I consume personal development co and content. So even if I spend hours on social media, it's mainly content that go that's going to make me a better person. And through social media, I did meet other people who were offering um, similar, who had similar interests and were offering the courses that I was offering. Mm. So I think it benefited me in a way. Yeah. Right. Um, as young as you are, there's been a lot of questions with regards to young people entering into politics. Yes. <laughs> Have you been thinking about it? Um, I mean, I don't, I don't mind. I think politics is something that when you're going into um, then you're probably going into it with a mind of service rather than personal gain. So I think. But do you think right. more young people going in there is more of a personal gain to enrich themselves quickly, or they are really going in there to help Ghanaians? I, mean, I can't. I can't read anyone's <laughs> mind. It's very difficult to read anyone's intentions, right? But then, everyone's expectation as a as a citizen is that if you are going into politics, then you are going in there to save. Right. You are going in there to save. So that is what is expected. But if you are doing anything otherwise, then that's, that's, you. that's you. I like that. And I'm so happy that I had this conversation with yeah, you. Your colleagues are watching. What do you have to tell the young ones out there? Um, well, hi, good morning. First of all, I forgot to greet earlier. But then um, I think it's good to set your mind to do whatever you want to do. But then it takes a lot of discipline. It takes a lot of hard work to get to where you want to get to. So I think you shouldn't give up on your, on your goals. You shouldn't um, you know, allow worldly pre um, pleasures to distract you. OK. So what we are going to do is we are going to actually uh, celebrate everybody out there who is making strides. But we want to say uh, that, Princess, congratulations on Thank what you. you do. And everybody out there is super duper proud of you. Let's see if we have some messages coming through for you. I think I have my tablet here, so I'll quickly try and grab the tablet and read some messages coming through for you, okay? So, one second. Please pardon me. Sometimes, you know, technology will make you know that <laughs> they are technology. <laughs> technology will just tell you that, hey, this is technology. Don't try me. Okay, so um, I'm trying so hard. Good. Finally, I have my messages opening. All right. So good morning. I'm very inspired by this young lady being a chartered accountant at the age of 18. Wow, congratulations, dear. Keep it up. 
Great. I want Princess Boateng to be my role model. Please tell her for me. I'm watching you now. All right. I've told her. Congratulations to her. Some of her age mates are on TikTok shaking their butt. <laughs> Do you want me to ask your take on that? Um, no. <laughs> Okay, this one says, hello, I'm Grace from UCC. I love this show. Please give it up. Thank you so much, Grace. Um, the Bible, Proverbs chapter 2, verse, uh, Proverbs chapter 29, verse 7, the consistently righteous man knows and cares for the righteous of the poor, but the wicked man has no interest in such knowledge. Thank you so much for sending us this Bible message. Hello, good morning. My name is uh, Links. Please, what about, uh, okay. This is a different conversation, but hey, we read your message. Thank you all so much for sending the messages. But Princess, thank you so much for being thank here. Thank you. Thank you for uh, hosting. You are super awesome. And of course, the world is yours for the take. Yeah. So go conquer it. Thank you. Thank, uh, thank you, you for hosting. You. Thank you for being here. Her name is Princess Coco Boating. And she has chartered at the age of 18 and the youngest chartered accountant right here in Ghana. She's still 18, though. She's, she hasn't crossed the 18. So for those of you looking at her with double eyes, don't look, especially the men, like, shut it. But thank you so much. This has been the big interview.